All right, many blessings. Uh, it is such an honor to be able to be back here today. I was gone for over, uh, it, it felt like forever, to be honest with you. I missed the house a lot. Uh, but nonetheless, I, I was having fun. Um, I was uh, at a wedding, my daughter's wedding, so we had a blast over there. Uh, but I'm definitely glad to be back and, uh, and be able to be back in the house and, and just join you guys. Man, I was watching you guys from over there and you guys were... Uh, we're going through the roof with some of the stuff that you guys were saying. So I just wanted to first take this time to uh, welcome everybody that's watching us online, everybody that's present here. And secondly, I wanted just to honor both of you guys for such a great job that you guys did while I was gone. Both you and Henry uh, knocked it out of the park. So thank you guys very much. Uh, and at the same time, just introduce yourself once again for somebody that might not know us. Amen. Well, glory to God. Um, God bless you guys. I am Andy. Uh, thank you for having us here. Um, it's awesome be, being able to be with you guys uh, through social media. Um, it's a platform that I was available on we use. Um, so thank you guys for joining us, everybody that's here. Um, and thank you for, for joining us now as well. Uh, we definitely missed you. Um, it was definitely, uh, I, I think it was, a, what would you call it? Like, it, it was a step for us to be able to feel the responsibility and the weight of carrying these conversations yeah. because when when you're here well we rely a lot on you mm -hmm. but when you weren't here we, we noticed the weight and how much we have to get prepared to be able to have these conversations because because you can just flow but it was like i was able to see that we had to actually get prepared and since you weren't here now was the weight was on us now but yeah so it's good that's it's good you guys did amazing though I, I really enjoyed watching you guys yeah yeah, we did. <laughs> well, hey guys, uh, um, you know, happy to see everyone that's here. Uh, many of the people that are, are here with us were at the wedding, so it's good to see more people here with us. So it's definitely good to see our pastor here yeah. with us. Yeah. Um, now, I was joking when I said, I mean, really, we saw the, the videos, but we definitely missed him. Uh, like Andy said, we we rely a lot on him, and, and we learn a lot when, when he's here. So uh, the fact that we had to prepare ourselves and, and give something to you guys uh, was a big responsibility. So um, you know, we're glad that he's back, and we're glad that uh, we can bring something, um, probably the continuation to what we were talking about last week, but now with his input. Right. You know, I, I was I was listening to you guys' conversation uh, or, or your teaching, should I say, and it was such, I was very impressed uh, to hear uh, all the input from you guys and all the revelation that you guys got from all of this stuff. So I wanted to, to just come back today and just continue on the conversation because this conversation on, on sonship is not, uh, you know, you don't hear it often to begin with. Right. Uh, you know, you don't hear it, you know, from the pulpits enough, I would say. Uh, and I think that it's a very important topic simply because the kingdom uh, functions with sons. You know, when, when we look at Malachi and it says that he was going to turn the hearts of the fathers to the sons and the sons back to the father, uh, we see that God's original intent was always to work within the realm of family, with yes. fathers and sons, with, with generations. Uh, and sometimes it is not spoken enough, you know, and, and I just wanted to go and kind of touch on some of the things that you guys were talking about because I believe that this is going to help other sons uh, that might be watching uh, through social media uh, better uh, uh, figure out their relationship with their father. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, I know that you gave uh, an introduction to the four, um, uh, last uh, Sunday you were talking about the four uh, groups, you know, the, 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 or the four stages, and I want to start there, and then we're going to jump around. But uh, but I want to start there because I want to start clarifying that aspect because there there's nothing wrong with them, right? But we need to understand where everybody uh, sits in order for them to be able to get out what they're looking for. Yeah, you know. So if if you can, you know, I I see that. Um, on Sunday, you were talking that the first stage is the crowd. Can you talk to me about that? Yeah. So like you said, it's important to be able to recognize uh, in what stage of relationship you're in mm -hmm. so that whoever is your pastor or your, or your authority can help you reach the next level. Mm -hmm. So the first stage that we were talking about was the crowd. Yeah. Um, the, the good thing about the crowd is that the crowd is needed. Every stage of relationship is needed. Um, but we were saying that you, if you're part of the crowd, you can't expect the blessings of a son. Mm -hmm. If you're part of the crowd, you have to know what you can receive from your pastor and what you can't. 
So we were saying that at the crowd, the only thing that you can receive is information and knowledge. Mm -hmm. And it's not that it's even transferred to you, because when you're in the mentorship level, that's when knowledge can get transferred to you. Right. At the crowd, you're just trying to absorb as much as you so, can. So that, that's powerful, and, and let's elaborate a little bit more on that, because you're saying, you know, you, you, you brought up mentorship and you brought the crowd. They yeah. both receive information, mm -hmm. but the transfer of information happens at the mentorship level. Yes. But it, and, and, but it can, can it happen also at the crowd level? I was just gonna say, um, I think it's a good wording to say you receive versus, versus it's transferred. Right. Because when it's transferred, something we talked about uh, is that in the mentorship level, you need to surrender something. Uh -huh. So when you s decide that, hey, he has something that I know that I need to better myself in, so I I'm gonna go ahead and surrender that. You might not surrender everything in your life, but you're willing to surrender this aspect of your life. In the crowd, since there's not connection, one-on-one right. -on -one communication with the Father, you're not really surrendering anything, you're just hearing the word. Yes. You know, you're just hearing it, and it's up to you at this point whether you accept it to be for you or not. And, and, yeah. Right. Yeah. We're gonna continue. No, no, it's good. Yeah. So, so what he's saying is, is spot on because at the mentorship level, because you submitted that area, mm -hmm. your mentor is able to transfer that specific area to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. But when you're part of the crowd, since there's no submission, there's no commitment, there's no uh, personal like relationship. The only thing you can get is information that you just happen like it just lands on you. Like it just like out of the whole preaching, you might just take one thing. Right. So that's the hard part about being part of the crowd is that you're literally trying to like fish for information and hoping that something sticks. Or even, I just want to add before I, I let you in, is at the crowd level, most of the people are there um, thinking about somebody else, I will say. So they're getting information yes. and they're kind of saying, man, I wish this person was here right. so that they can hear this. <laughs> right. Instead of saying, oh man, look at this information. This right. is good for me to be able to change an area of my life. So right. being at the crowd, you get information, yeah. But then, but that information necessarily sometimes you don't even receive it for yourself. Yeah. You just wish somebody else would have heard it, yeah. right? And, and that's how the, disconnected you are. Yes. And then the the other aspect of being part part of the crowd, and we see it with Jesus. And as you're saying this, now I'm seeing it. But if you're part of the crowd, you're really only there because you want to give the appearance that you're interested. Mm. When you're part of the crowd, you just want to let other people know that you're trying to understand it, or you want to give this appearance that. That you're that you're part of whatever's happening. You're just checking something out, you know. Right. It's like kind of like when an accident happens, the crowd comes to see what's happening. They yes. don't necessarily care, right? They don't want to help. They they just want to see it. But we see Jesus saying that it's like the only reason that you guys have followed me through the desert is because I feed you. Yeah. So you're not interested in me. You're not interested in my father. You're not interested in my message. All you're interested is appearing that you're interested, and really all you want is what I'm gonna give you guys. So, so that's another aspect of being part of the crowd. Yeah, and uh, being part of the crowd, like any other step in the relationship process, uh, the reason why we say it's, it's good and it's okay is because just like in your life, you go through seasons, mm -hmm. it's just part of a season. So if you're in the crowd season, that's fine because that's the season you're in. But yeah. the thing is that in order to transition to the next season, there needs to be some kind of revelation. Because unless there's some revelation that, that you need something that this person has, you're not going to seek for it. And if you don't seek, you're not going to find it. That's what the Bible says, right? Yeah. So it, the only way to, to really, and that, that's where what you said comes in, because if you're in the crowd and you're thinking about somebody else, and you're not applying it to your life, you're never going to receive revelation yeah. to move forward. And that's where frustration comes in, because you're right. here thinking that you're part of uh, probably a different level of relationship because now you may say hi to the pastor after church and have a conversation with him but it, it you really are not because you've not chosen to help your father's vision you've not helped uh chosen to surrender anything in your life to your father and definitely you know you're not willing to pay that high price that we talked about when it comes to sonship so it's okay to be in the crowd, it's just not okay to stay in the crowd because that means that you're not receiving anything exactly. from the Father. Because either way, when the Father speaks or the pastor speaks, um, that if you're really looking for it, you're going to receive something. Whether you're in a son or you're in the crowd, and whatever you receive is what's going to determine what the next step is. 
Yeah, one of the, the powerful things, and you were saying that yeah, there's nothing wrong with being part of the crowd. Why? Because when we look at Jesus, where did he get his 12 disciples from? Exactly. The, crowd. the crowd. You know, he went there and that's where he, he chose them to follow him and come into a closer relationship with him. So there's nothing wrong with being in the crowd, uh, but it's like you were saying, the problem is if you just want to stay part of the crowd. Yes. Because when, when things get tough, uh, the, the people that are in the crowd, they will walk away, but the people that, are, that have a closer relationship will stay. So, right. you know, that, that kind of like leads us also into kind of like the next uh, uh, aspect or, or, or the next uh, phase, which you were talking about was... Wait, so so before we, we, we transfer there, the last thing that I want to say, um, and you touched on it a little bit, but the frustrating part about being part of the crowd is that all you can be is a witness. That's the only thing that, that you can be, that you can do. So it's frustrating to be part of the crowd because you're receiving all this information and you've said that the kingdom is not about information or knowledge, it's, it's about application. So being part of the crowd, you're seeing the kingdom being manifested in the pastor and the father and the father's sons. And then that's when frustration also grows because it's like, I'm hearing the same information they are, but why is it that they're receiving all these things or why is it that the kingdom is being manifested through them and not me? So that's built because, again, you're part of the crowd. You can only be a witness. But, yeah, as you were saying, the next stage is helpers. No, I was just going to say, and that's where um, there, there needs to be a level of revelation. If you're not revealed or you don't understand that there's a vision to pursue, that yeah. your father has a vision to pursue, you, you won't transition to becoming a helper, which is the next step. So um, yeah. what about when you're a helper? Well, um, and I want you to talk about it because, you know, it was uh, your preaching. Um, how do you differentiate the crowd from the helpers? It's 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 kind of tough because yes, there's a differentiation, but they're still kind of both in the same boat. Um, but helpers, you you can kind of see that they have that that um, I mean, what's that word? Like. Uh, not intention but they have like an inclination to be closer uh, yeah a little desire more yeah. uh, to to get more closer to what you're doing but not close enough to to f carry the full weight it's right like, exactly you, like you know the pastor or, or the father of the house is doing something and you're like okay you know i can volunteer to help right. whatever he's doing you know, right. But there's no responsibility in you right. to carry the weight. It's yeah. just, you're just helping whenever you can kind of thing. Right, right. exactly. Yeah, because as a helper, uh, the biggest thing that happens once you become a helper is that you've eaten of the fruit of the pastor, you've eaten of his uh, talent, of, the, of his gifts, and you like it so much that you want to help. Yeah. So at that point, it's like, hey, like, what can I do to help? But because you're not a son, the pastor can not put any weight weight on you it's just like hey well we come set up at 6 30 if you want like you can come show up if you want to but it's not like uh like any weight is put on it's just more like an option and you hit and you said the correct word it's a volunteer it's yeah. like hey if you want you can come help if you want we're doing this as they show up if if you show up cool if you don't cool like there's no weight that i can put on you as a helper but thank you for helping out though so it, it, it is something that they're not necessarily too invested in, but they just right. want, they just uh, have received enough to where they want to give a little bit more, but not necessarily, uh, like I said, commitment. Right, yeah, and, and what I was saying that the dangerous part about being a helper is because you can, like, you can form this illusion that because you're giving maybe some of your time, because you're investing monetarily, um, you can fool yourself into thinking that you're doing more than what you actually are. So therefore, now you put these false expectations on your pastor that he has to do something for you. And that's just the complete opposite end of what a son does. Because a, a son serves without like expecting anything in return. A son serves because he wants to help the father. A son helps because he wants to expand the father's vision. He has the heart of the father. But since a helper doesn't have any of those things, if a helper comes and like helps out with a chair, he's expecting like, okay, like I helped you, what are you gonna do for me? I'm giving you my offerings and I'm tithing and I'm giving these honor seats. I don't see you doing anything in my life. So that's the dangerous part because now you enter this part like I give, but I'm expecting. It's something a very in great area for the for the helper. Yes, for the helper. Yeah, yeah. And in another gray area, like you said, that I see, and it just came to mind right now, is like we talked about, um, and we'll talk about it later. But how sons are given the responsibility, and because they know they're part of the father, so they're even able to. And they're actually not able; they're all required to take care of the people that come to the house, right. right? Just like the father, because they're representing him. Right. But how many churches do you see where the helpers 
think that they have the ability to help out the sheep because mm -hmm. because right. they're helping and like you said they they're giving offerings they're giving tithe and they're here you know they come ushers whatever you want to call them right and then they think that now i have the responsibility to come and like this person is going through something and i can or have the authority to come and tell him what to do and guide mm -hmm. him right. but you really don't have the vision of the father so you don't have the authority right. to do it and that's like that great area right they think that they do but in reality they don't yeah right. one of the one of the dangers with the helper situation is that that they're there for self-promotion yes yeah. so yeah. they help because they want to be promoted right yeah. they help because they they want to ascend to a position yeah. and maybe that position doesn't even belong to them because it belongs to the sons right but because they're helping they want to assert a position right. yeah so being a helper is a good thing but it's very dangerous because it, it gives them the impression that because they're moving around they're serving in a certain area they're not committed to it they think that they're the next one they're the next up that they're entitled to something they're in the line of succession when they're no they're not even in the in the rearview mirror they're, right they're busy but not proactive exactly right and, and mostly because like what we're saying they they just want to be self promoters right so it's very dangerous to be in the helper category because they're normal they want to help because they want to be seen right and they want to help because they want to be promoted right and, and when they and when the son gets promoted they get they get mad at the second saying hey look i've been putting in all this work why didn't you give it to me right and and it becomes an, an issue because they're they're really not committed they right. just they just help just because they want to be promoted. Right. Well, they still haven't paid or made the price. Like and and probably once we get to the next levels, but we're really gonna touch what the price of the sun is right. because there's a huge d distinction of the price that the sun has t t to pay. Right. But even at the helper level, it's still a very monetary price. And like and again, monetary price to pay is the least thing that you, it's the easiest thing. It's just like, hey, here's 10 bucks, here's 20 bucks. Um, here, Let me buy your book, your CD, right, download exactly. your preaching. Yeah. Uh, and, and they feel that they're, that's a support. Right, exactly. And don't get me wrong, it is a support, yeah. <laughs> but it's not a, at the level that a son pays. Right, it's, it's not at the level where you can receive now the blessings of the son and receive the heart of the father, receive the favor of the father, uh -huh. because that's what it really gets down to. It's like, sons receive the favor of the father. The father just does things for the son that he's not going to do for anybody else because of the service that the son has done to the father. So when helpers or the crowd or, or mentees see that, that's when the conflict in their heart arises. Right. And that example, of, I really like it, that example of the father doing things that the son doesn't even deserve is like the ultimate example is, is Jesus, you know, coming and die for people that to everybody else didn't deserve it, but because they were sons. He was willing to die for them, right? And that, yeah. and that, that's good. Yeah, yeah, and that helper's good, yeah. position, uh, like we said with the crowd, is good because it means that you you moved out of the crowd, you right? Moved out of the crowd. But it, yeah, <laughs> yeah <slowly but> you <laughs> you moved out, so you know that there's something that you need from the father, right? Right. But it's just dangerous, like he said, because you're looking for that um, selfishness, recognition, recognition, yeah. exactly, and then. Um, I don't know. I feel like I see it a lot. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but I, I see it a lot in churches where it's like, you know, because you're a helper uh, and you're looking for that recognition, it's easy to see because you want to help the pastor. You want to help the fa pastor's family, yeah. but you don't want to help the new person that just showed up today. Right. You just want to yeah. help the people that will see you right. and really give good. you that recognition you're where you can for. benefit from. Right, exactly. Yeah, and, and that is so true because it's like, sons if you're a son then you know the heart of the father and the heart of the father is to serve everybody else so we see that as sons but a helper we yeah, like, like you said will merely want to help the people that he can benefit from or that he'll be seen in helping and even with that like helpers will only help in things that they can be seen yeah. but if you tell a helper hey show show up at 6 30 to clean the bathrooms they're, they're gonna be like no why am i gonna go clean the bathrooms nobody's gonna know i did it i'm not gonna be seen so they don't do stuff like that but it's like sons will do anything even if they've not seen I'll it. open up prayer. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But because, again, like all these things are public things where they can receive glory from. So, again, they want to receive glory. They don't want to give the glory to their father. They don't want to credit their father. They want to receive all the credit at that point, too. That, 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 that is deep right there because a helper always wants credit yes. for what they're doing. They don't want to credit the father. They don't want to credit anybody else. They just want to be seen for what they're doing. 
and, right. and receive a, a, a big reward for it. Right, and then, so so before we go to the next levels, um, something that I wanna say is, if you don't know what level you're at, your pastor knows where you're at. Yeah. And, and that's the tough part about it, is that your pastor or your father will always know where you're at, but it's up to you if you wanna now seek that guidance, seek that counsel, seek that relationship, and hear from the father or from the pastor, because if you think that you're a mentor or a son, but then you ask your pastor, hey, you, you're the pastor of this house, where am I? And he tells you, hey, you're actually only part of the crowd yet, then that's when you need to really check if you're ready for those answers. You know what I was thinking about as you were saying that it's like a, a helper can also be uh, like an immature son. Yes, you know, a child. A, a child, you know, and, and, and a child is only there to receive, is never there to serve or to give anything. Right. Uh, and, and every time uh, that, that this immature son, uh, you know, gets reprimanded or, or they tell them that what they're doing is not enough, they get offended and they walk away. Right. Simply yeah. because they, they, they <laughs> haven't paid the price yet. Right. They can't handle correction yet. Exactly. And they can't be molded yet. Exactly. That's awesome. So the next one that we have here is what the mentee. Yes, the mentee mentorship. The the, the mentee is, is is I really like when you were talking about the mentee uh, because it, it's the mentee is peculiar in a way like you were saying that they only submit an area of their of their life. Yes. They only seek you out for one specific thing. Yes. They don't seek you out for the whole package. Right. All they want is help me with this and I'm done. Right. And and, and they don't seek you for who you are. They seek you for your gift and for what you for what you're giving. Yeah. But not for who you are. Yeah. Yeah, so so that's part of what it's again it's good that you're a mentee, but you have to realize that the only reason you've chosen to submit an area of your life is because you want to grow in that area you uh, you want to break through um, which is good because you can take it back to your family you can right. really take it back to your work your business but again know that you're not a son yet because you haven't paid the day the price you haven't submitted your whole life yet you haven't submitted every area of you you've only submitted that one area because you want to just take that area from your pastor right and even in that relationship i would say uh, a father is is the YC is kind of designated by God because you align yes. your vision to the vision of your father. So you can't really, once you discover your vision or you're pursuing that relationship with God, ultimately you you, you understand the relationship you need to have with the father, right? But right. with the mentee, you actually can choose anyone. Yes. And that's where like the seek first the kingdom uh, comes in because I don't know when we were talking about it, but last week we were talking about it. It's like that you pursue separately all these things that the kingdom wants to offer you if you just submit to the right person right, right? so yeah. when you submit to your father is that right person that you're supposed to submit to that will guide you to make sure that you seek the kingdom and you will receive everything else rather than pursuing oh i need a financial mentor i need a uh i don't know peace mentor whatever you want to call it right right and you're pursuing each one of these individually yeah. which they're all good but why even um start just by submitting one simple area of your life when you um, can submit or to your father who's going to guide you through the process. Right, exactly. Um, and one of the things too, even speaking about that mentorship level, um, it's really a testing level to see if you want to become a son or if you are a son. Because like you said, fathers are designated. Sons are going to hear the voice of their father. Sons are going to hear the heart of their father and it's going to put in them like that spirit right it's going to resonate um because like if, if i'll speak from personal experience like when god uh first put you and your wife um in my life it, it started at a very crowd level like you guys uh, may would preach and my spirit would would resonate and like what you guys were preaching about the kingdom but i wouldn't understand it yet because i, I just didn't have that revelation yet but once it got revealed is when now we when I, like i started going to the bible studies and it was like okay I'm still part of the crowd because I like what you're saying. I like what you're preaching. So let me receive this because this is what I want. But as I started hearing and trying to understand this and gain knowledge and wisdom in it, that's when, okay, now I'm like, okay, hey, I, I like what he's saying. Let me help him out in whatever he needs help with. Hey, so what do you want me to do or what do you need me to do? But at the time, I didn't understand that 
I, I didn't have any weight put on me because I was simply a helper. Right. But then as time went on, that, that's when I started praying to God for, for revelation because I'm like, hey, whatever he, this guy and his wife are doing, like you didn't put them in my place just for nothing. Like what's the reason that they're here? So that's when we had a formal talk. And this is what, what I forgot to say, but recognition from mentee to, to son or even to a mentee level, it has to be formalized and accepted. So, for example, when we had the talk about, hey, like, I know God put you guys in my life for a reason. Um, I think it's to mentor me. I didn't have that revelation yet, but you guys sat me down and said, hey, pray about it. Because even at a mentorship level, now there's parameters. There's certain things that you have to abide by. You have to seek and whatever, like, we tell you, like, make sure that you apply it. But it's still not at the sun level. So as we went through our mentorship or relationship now, we grew. And then that's when I started to know you guys for who you were. Like, I wasn't just interested in the message that you guys were saying, but now in who you guys were as people. And then that's when our, our conversation started to get deeper. And we started talking about what your desires were, what you wanted to do, how you wanted to expand the kingdom. And that's when in my spirit, it was like, hey, like the same desires that you have, the same vision that you have, like, that's what I want to do. But in my area of gifting that I had at the time, which was the worship team. So that's when, like, the real question started resonating. It's like, okay, hey, like, God, what does it mean that, like, everything he says, like, I want to do too. Like, and then that's when you started teaching about fatherhood and sonship. And that's when it clicked, like, hey, like, this is my spiritual father. These are my authorities. So when we had that conversation, now that was a more serious conversation. Because I recognize you as a father, but now you had to receive it and you had to, we had to formalize it. Because now as a son, now we're getting into, okay, now you're choosing to submit your life. You're choosing to submit your gifts, your talents. You're choosing to submit your relationships. Because, and that's relationships with your friends or with a significant other. Like all these areas now, it was like, hey, are you sure you want to pay the price? Are you sure you're ready for sonship? Because if you say that I'm your father and we enter into this relationship, there's no like, there's no going back. Because if we do go back, then that reveals that you were just being led by emotion and that you didn't want to submit. And it was, and this is going to be a, a big old mess at the end of the day. But yeah, so that's what I was going to say, that it does have to be recognized and received by both the mentee and the father. Yeah, let, let, let's talk about that because, and, and I guess we're going to get a little bit personal uh, in this whole conversation about it. But how was your journey? You kind of mentioned a little bit about it right now as you, as you, you know, as you're explaining it. Right. But um, for the people that are listening that don't know what it looks like, that don't know what the process is, that don't know the steps, um, what, what, how was it for you and how were you able to recognize it to be able to come to me and say, hey, look, this is what I feel God is saying. This is what I, the Spirit is leading me to. Because right. the times that you came to me, I sent you right back. Right, and I, <laughs> yeah. I, and I sent you back about two to three times. Yeah, because I told you, hey, you know what? I I, I know what you're saying. I just don't want this to be emotional. Right. I, do, I just don't want this to be something in the spur of the moment. You like the message that I gave. And yes. all of a sudden you say, hey, you're my daddy. No, no, no. It doesn't work that way. Right. Our, our visions are aligned. Are, right. are we going in the same destination? Do you want to serve? And are you willing to put your life on the line so that I can correct it and move certain yes. areas? Because all of those conversations we had. Yes. So I, I think people think that just because they're sitting in a church and they're sitting in, in, in a bench and the pastor speaks nice and they've been there for five, 10 years, they think that's my dad. Right, no. Yeah, no, so 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 that is a very, uh, like, a, a false, like, cons or a false way of seeing it that you can fall into because you can like the things that the pastor is saying and you can say, man, like, that's good, like, that's good stuff, I love the way that he preaches, but now, as a son, it's like, no, do you really understand the message of the father? Because that's one of the first ways that you're going to be able to recognize your, your father is, is your, is your spirit aligning with their message that they're speaking? So as I was saying, like when you were pre preaching at, at our, at our older church, um, you were speaking about the kingdom and preaching about the kingdom. So it was at that moment that that seed was planted. Like I said, I didn't understand it yet, but I liked what you were saying. I knew that in my spirit, Hey, whatever this kingdom thing is like, that's what my spirit is receiving. 
and that's what I, I know is the true message and I want to pursue it. So I started seeking it. And again, you always have to seek at every level. It's not up to you to come search me or come look for me and say, hey, come to my house because I'm teaching this on Fridays. It's like, no, I had to seek it. But the minute that I received that revelation, it was like, okay, hey, like, are you teaching this? Hey, how can I learn this? Because this is what I want to learn. I know this is a the thing. But again, it was still at a very generic crowd helper level. It wasn't even a mentee yet. So how long did it take you, for example, when you went from the crowd to a helper, to a mentee, and then to a son? Well, how long did you do you estimate that process was for you? Because the process is different for everybody. Right. But but for you, I, I remember you showing up at my door one day. Yeah. And I'm like, what is this kid doing here? Yeah, so literally, so a quick backstory was I was with Henry at Starbucks and we were going over to some things and then he showed me a preaching on the kingdom and that's when like it clicked. And I was like, hey, who is teaching this kingdom stuff? And he's like, Halton is at, at Fridays. I'm like, send me the address. I'm going. You guys had no idea I was showing up. I just showed up on a Friday and was like, hey, Henry told me that you're preaching about the kingdom. I want to learn. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. And, and that's true. But from that point on, yeah. how, long, how long was the process for you? Was it like, like a year, year and a half? Okay, so... Like you said, everybody's process is different and I'll say the faster the process is is based on the more you seek it. Mm -hmm. So if I remember right, I could be wrong, but going from crowd to helper to the first stage of NT, I think it could took me maybe a month or two. Like it was fairly quick. quick. Yeah, but because I was seeking it so much, like I was just so into it that that's all I wanted. So everything that you would preach or teach, I took a bunch of notes. I was going over it at my house. I was really trying to understand it. So yeah, I would say it was maybe a couple months. But then once the mentee like relationship got um, I mean, revealed, that's when we had our, our first conversation. Because now I was like, hey, I know that God put you guys in my life for a reason. And I think it's so you can mentor me. And then that's when we opened up. I was like, hey, like I have these areas that I'm struggling with. These are areas that I want to break through. I don't want to be the same anymore. And then that's when, yeah, you, you sent me back and you said, hey, pray about it. Because if you want me to mentor you, you have to acknowledge that you have to take my correction. You have to take my instruction. Again, it's still not at the level of a son because a son takes it without questioning. But even at a mentee, it's like, okay, you're some, you're choosing to submit because you want to change. But are you sure that you want to change it? Are you sure that you want to hear the things I'm going to tell you? Man, yeah, cra craziness. How about you? How was your process? Everybody was a little bit different. But when, when did you discover, or or when did you understand that relationship with me? Yeah, I think. Uh, something to note is that it's easy to confuse familiarity with a uh, relationship yeah. because i was around you f since i moved to california you know I, I didn't live i lived in texas and then before before that i lived in El Salvador. and since i moved to california i've been around you i mean i was 16 at the time so we grew familiar yeah but that didn't necessarily create any father-son relationship mm. because like we've said uh, the only thing that can create that is when you recognize it as a son right? right so I was familiar I was around but the way I would see it is that um, even though for for a few years I was around uh, and this is something we talked last week is that you're first tested with the physical you know you're first uh, tested with uh, in this case your 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 um, biological parents my even my relationship with my parents my dad uh, whom I don't live with or he hasn't lived around me wasn't really like great at the time and even with my mom I mean I was 16 17 you know those years is like as soon as I, I turned 18 I got my first car it's like I wanted to do whatever I wanted and that relationship even was rocky so in in that sense I feel like I the way I see I see being or, or getting that access to the spiritual father in this case you is that until i'm able to prove that i can sustain and i can honor my relationship with my uh, biological parents i'm not going to re be revealed who my spiritual father was mm -hmm. because like i said even though i was familiar and i was around you a lot i i wasn't i didn't have the revelation of who you truly were in my life you know and that led to even uh acting 
foolish in a way, you know, like so many things that led to that. And then um, I think, uh, what, three years ago, um, it, I just kind of went my own way because again, even though I was so close, so close to you by being around you, I didn't have the revelation of who you were in my life. And it wasn't until last year that I truly realized, you know, my relationship, by the way, my relationship with my parents were, was a lot better. I mean, it, it's improved so much. And then I personally believe that that led to me being able to identify what the next step was. And at that point is when I realized, well, like, you know, so much going on in my life and I'm, I'm at this church or I'm around these people and I still lack something. And that's where like that, like what's good versus what's right comes in. Because even though you may be around good, good people, great people, people of God even, you know, it doesn't mean that they're the right person for your life. Right. And that's what, and that's where like my thing came in. Because I was already really involved at my other church, yeah. you know, and uh, operating at a, at a busy level, I would say. But personally, even though I was busy helping in the church, I wasn't proactive because I wasn't in the right in the right place i wasn't positioned in the right place so there was no personal growth and that's what mo motivated me to to look back and, and see like who's like who have i been around that has really uh that while i was around them i grew and it helped my life and, and that's where i realized too like all these things that you know this guy was telling me that i never put into action like now i'm trying to put it into action but i don't have him I'm not around him, so there's like this cap that I can't go past uh, or beyond that cap because it's just like it's just what I remember of the relationship we had and like the way he, the things that he told me to do at the time that I didn't do, but now I'm trying to do. But there's questions that I have that I I, I can't answer. So that's when like uh, like I said that mentorship and I think I I just jumped through all of that to be honest. Uh, at that point, because um, even though you tr you had tried to help me in the past, I can't say we really had a mentorship relationship because um, I don't think I really took that advice. And that's what, yeah. uh, as a mentor, you're supposed to, uh, if you submit, yeah. then you're uh, pretty much accepting correction, like you said. And we th I, I think I skipped that. And then when I came right away, it's like, hey, like uh, I already understand who you truly are in my life, you know, and, and this is uh, this is what I want. You know, I want to be your son. I want to grow, and this these are the areas of my life that I've been trying to improve. But you tell me, and then I just had to submit. You know, like there was um, when when I started coming back, and at this point you had a church because back then you didn't have a church, and now you have a church, and it's like, well, what is my my place? And that was that was one of the things I always wondered because it's like, well, you know. I know I can help in so many areas, but it's like, at the end of the day, like you tell me what you want me to do. And I think we uh -huh. we started with that, and it's, and I remember the first thing you told me is just sit down, just listen, you know, just listen. And then, and so I did, you know, and even that process was quick because uh, I was looking for more, and I was trying to get involved, and I was around, and, and that's where even those late nights conversations that we talked, um, and even the fact that I was able to be vulnerable with you, which I think in the past I hadn't been, you know, you were able to see things in my life that I needed to improve, but I wasn't willing to actually open up and surrender mm -hmm. those, those things and tell you, hey, like, yeah, like I'm actually struggling with that or I'm actually, uh, I, I need help in that area or, or in this area or whatever. So, and, um, and that's, that's where like just the relationship, I think, started to move quick, you know, at the moment I realized who you were in my life. Oh man, that 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 is crazy, and uh, I'm gonna let you guys continue because I got a question here that they sent, and I want to ask you guys this question. Um, but what what is the you know one of the things when we talk about mentorship, for example, the mentee and the mentor, and 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 they confuse their mentor with their father. Yeah. And and I know people that have like mentorship programs, for example. So people come and they buy the mentorship program and they go through the courses of the mentorship program. And, and, and these people, because they have paid, you know, for this mentorship, now they think that the person that, that, that has given them the mentorship is their spiritual father. Right. Uh, but they don't realize that, that they're paying for something. Uh, 
you know, sons usually don't pay. Right. Yeah. It is the mentees, yeah. the helpers in the crowd. Yeah. Usually when you get to the level of the son, you pay not necessarily monetarily, you pay right. with other with time and servitude yeah. and other and other things. Yeah. Uh, but you know, we do want to make that distinction uh, between the mentorship and the mentee. Uh, because something the mentee feels, this is my father, because man, I, I bought all four of his courses. Right. I, I put ten thousand dollars in into his pocket through 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 this teachings. Uh, and then at the end they find out, hey, you know what? You got what you got, you know, out of it. You know, you, you your ten thousand dollars got you my four my four programs, but they didn't get you me. Right, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, the son is different. Sometimes the mentors or the mentees get upset at the sons because the sons kind of like bypass all of that stuff. Right. Be because of their, uh, of their level of servitude and the price that they pay. And, and it comes with what you guys are saying. A mentee only, only submits themselves to a certain area, whether it's information or whether it's financial, whatever it is that they need. Uh, a son just gives the entire life. Here's my life. Yes. You know, and we see it with Jesus. Yeah. Jesus gave his entire life to the Father. Yeah. He just didn't give him one area of his life. Right. So, you know, what can you say about that difference between the mentee and the son? Well, we, you know, we've been saying that the, the minimal price that you will pay is financial, yeah. right? And that's where, like, it really applies because if you really think about it, about what we've, nothing that we've given you is probably even financially we've, probably haven't given you as much as other people have blessed right. you financially you know so there's really nothing that we can come and say like we gave you to earn that you know it's just like we decided to submit to you and ultimately there's so many other areas in which like um and this i actually wanted to talk about and um uh, I, I heard uh this from hubert you know I, i'm sorry i don't know how to pronounce your last name but <laughs> there you go <laughs> But Brother Huber, you blessed us with uh, sonship because if I may add, um, well, while I was studying about sonship, it's so hard to find uh, any material on, on sonship right. that's, that's linked to the kingdom. Like you yes. hear e everywhere, religion and, and kingdom and every, everything about fatherhood, but you don't really hear it from my son's perspective. So, and he wrote a book and, you know, we were reading it and um, uh, something he said is that, uh, sorry, I just lost my train of thought. I'll ask the question and see if that yeah. thought comes back. So the question is, um, what about helpers uh, sometimes being placed in positions of sons without being sons? Uh -huh. my, my, my answer to that would be like, who placed them? Because the father would never place yeah. them in a position with sons. But that's what we're talking about because like in the kingdom, sonship and fatherhood is such a, uh, it's such a big thing because yeah. it's a, it's, we're talking about a royal family. We're talking about the king and his sons. So everything works through fathers and sons. It works through the family. But in religion, it doesn't. Right. In religion, that's where the frustration comes from. From churches, I would say, when when a, when a pastor sees somebody that is talented, that only wants to help, and he puts them in the position of a son, but he doesn't want to be a son. He just wants to help. Right. So this guy says, I already helped you enough. It's time for me to go. And now the pastor comes and curses him as he leaves instead of blessing him on the way out because he didn't understand that he wasn't a son. He was just a helper. Oh. Right. So there are people in churches that put helpers in positions of son. Yeah. A position that doesn't belong to them simply because they don't understand their relationships. Right. If yeah. You're probably more qualified to answer this than me. But the way I see it is that if the pastor is the one positioning this person, knowing that he's not a son, then is the pastor really a father? Because a father is able to identify, you know, the, the these levels and position them accordingly. Well, surprisingly, you, you'll find out that in the religious world, this, this concept is very misunderstood. Yeah, it is. Uh, and, and they don't, and everybody's a spiritual father, a spiritual mother, right. and, they, and they're not even that to the people that they're supposed to be fathering or mothering anyway. Right. Uh, so it, it, is a, it's a, it causes frustration, not only on the pastor, but it causes frustration also to, to the individual because yeah. the individual believes that they have a relationship that they don't. Right. So like, for example, your pastor is not necessarily your spiritual father. Right. But some pastors say, I'm your father. Right. And they don't even have a relationship with you. Right. They don't exactly. even know your name. They don't even know who you are. The simple <laughs> fact that they, that you sit in their congregation, they, they, they say that that's the reason that you're their son. And then you believe that they're their son and then they ignore you. And you feel like, oh, the pastor ignored me today. He didn't talk to me today. Uh, he doesn't take me into account. Why? Because you're not a son. Right. Why would he take you into account if you're exactly. not a son? But the problem was that he made you believe that you were right. because you were sitting in a pew. 
Right, exactly. And then that's what I would say is like the positions of sons, like it's not necessarily a public place they've um, made to be. You've, you'll know that you've been put in a position of son where you're, when you're at the table of the father. Right. Like when, when you said, when you have that personal relationship with your father, that's when you'll know that, okay, he placed me in the position of a son. But if he simply places you like in a public p p position, yeah. like you said, it could be from a place, it sucks to say, but of abuse. Yeah. It's like, hey, like this dude is good at playing piano. So let me put this guy on the piano, play every service, uh, be part of the best team here at church because your gift is really good. So <laughs> like you said, that's when that confusion exists because the pastor knows that this isn't gonna be my son, but I'm gonna use his gift and his talent. So then the dude thinks, hey, like this guy is putting me in these places, like he's ex um, ex exposing me to these groups and I'm growing, but you're only growing like in the area of your gift. Like I, I think that something that you said is very powerful. And I think that everybody that is listening needs to understand this. If you can't sit at the table of the Father, you're not a son. Yes, right. So that goes the same way with your pastor. If you can't sit with your pastor, if you're not in that group, you're not a son. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, and you're not even a mentee yet. It's or like a mentee. Yeah. It is not bad, but you just need to understand so you don't get frustrated. Right. And, and it's important, and this is actually what Huber said, that I, I forgot is is that a son is meant to cut is meant to cover what the father lacks. Yeah. So you think that you come and oh he preaches so I'm going to aid him now I want to preach too mm -hmm. because he's so good and to make him proud I want to preach good but in reality a son is meant to cover what he's not good at because right. like we said uh, you have your gifts you have your talents but I have mine. And when I identify myself as a son, then I need to identify what is my father lacking, you know? And if you're not able to, and, and that's where like the, the whole selfishness with uh, helpers and mentors right. and all that comes in, because as a son, you're not longer thinking it's like, where can I shine? It's like, right. okay, what do they lack? What, what does my father lack that I need to cover? Right, man, that is so good because as you were speaking that, I was thinking about Noah. You know, Noah said that he built a, or that the, he uh, cultivated a, a vineyard. And once the, the, the grapes were ripe, he did some wine, he drank, and he got drunk. Right. And then he said that one of his sons did something that was very dishonorable. Yes. And then he went out and he told his other two brothers. But then it says once their two brothers found out what, what the other brother had done, they came back and they covered right. the exactly. father. So the sons, true sons, always cover the nakedness of the father yes. the true sons always look at the blind spots of the father right. the things that he's lacking and they cover it so that he can never be shamed right and, sorry and if i may add that even may apply with well among other sons mm -hmm. because if you really think about it he was a son yes. he saw the nakedness of his father he should have covered that but instead he went out and he even though it was within family he still exposed the nakedness of his father right. whereas he sh he was supposed to cover it and nobody was supposed to know of of that right right not only was nobody supposed to know he went and he told everybody yeah in his circle shaming the father Right. So as a true son doesn't shame. A true son comes and, he's, and he covers the father. Right. He covers the blind spots. He covers his necessities. He covers the things that he's lacking. Uh, that's what uh, dictates what a true son is. That's why, yes. you know, everybody out there that calls himself a son but talks bad about their pastor is not a son. Right. Everybody that, that calls themselves a, a true son but is out there, um, you know, just exposing all this negative stuff that's going on is not a true son. Right. Uh, because he, he, he's not... Uh, He's not covering the father. He's 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 exposing his nakedness. Right. So you know, uh, all these so-called sons that are doing that, then they want to come back home and receive honor. Right. Uh -uh. It's not going to happen. No. Yeah, and unfortunately, um, the only way going back to the question, the only way uh, to truly find the father-son relationship, it's in the kingdom. Yeah. And I'm sorry to say, it's not in religion because the the, the whole structure was designed by men. The right. kingdom, the structure of the kingdom was sent by God. Yeah. So the like we we said last week, if a father is supposed to redirect you back to your heavenly father, and right. the only way to do that is by abiding to the to the uh, laws and the the way that he structured the church and father son relationships, yeah. not the way the men did. And that's what religion has done is that they have their own way of doing it. When yeah. you might think, yeah, I'm close to, and even if you have a cool relationship with them, how is he redirecting you back to your original father? 
right up. Yeah. And well, even in the words of Paul, it's like as you're saying, saying as you're saying this, it's like the message of God that He gave Jesus was the kingdom. The message that Jesus gave his disciples was the kingdom. The message that, his, that the disciples preached was the kingdom. So then we get to Paul, and, and Paul says, I'm your father because I brought you into the kingdom. I so, birthed you into right, the kingdom. He's like, I birthed you into the kingdom. So I'm your father because I have the message of the kingdom, and I birthed you into it. Now, I, I want to say that, and, and like I said, I'm going to step on some toes here, but it has to be said. Anybody that calls themselves a father but hasn't birthed you into the kingdom is not a father. Right. Uh -huh. Because we have kingdom things and things that are tares that work against the kingdom. Right. So if if the person that calls himself a spiritual father didn't bring you into the kingdom, he's not your father. Right. Wow, yeah. Wow, because wow. he's not going to take you back to Abba Father. He's not going to take you back to Because he doesn't have the message God. of God. Because he doesn't have the message. Right. So for all the pastors that are out there that are not teaching the kingdom, you can't have sons. Right. Yeah. Or like, true sons, I say, because because right. you're not birthing them into the kingdom, right? And then, as you were saying, like part of the question to answer it too, it's like, as a son, you you have to know what the function of a father is, so that you can know if you're actually a son. So if your pastor isn't your main source, if you don't have access to him, if he if he isn't answering every question of yours, if there's no relationship, if you've never been invited to his house. He's not sourcing you. If he's not sustaining you in any way, then he's not um, your father. Yeah. If he's not covering or protecting you, he's not your father. Yeah. So therefore, you, if, you're, if your pastor isn't doing any of these things, then he's not your father. If all he's doing is taking your tithes and offering, but none of those things, is he your father? Right, exactly. Because <laughs> Yeah, because unfortunately, like in the religious <laughs> system, we see a lot of abuse in that it's way. Abuse. Where pastors want to just take and exploit like the gifts and talents of people, but they have no interest in helping them. And, the, yeah. and that leads to you not, not being told what you need to be told, being corrected, because now... Uh, the pastor might be afraid to lose the money that you bring to the church. For right, or, or your gifts or your talent. Exactly, and then just to add to what you said, um, uh, the kingdom is, like we've said, is it's all about manifestation. It's not about words and what you say. So the fact that, and I say this because the word kingdom and kingdom things is just so common right now. The fact that you hear kingdom does not mean it's kingdom. Right. The, well, I've spoken to people that say they go to kingdom churches, and then I start talking about the kingdom, and they tell me, they ask me, what is that? Right. And I'm like, well, I thought they taught the kingdom at your church. I'm like, yeah, we're, we're, we're kingdom. We're a kingdom house. I'm right. like, really? And then I start talking to you, to them about the kingdom, and I'm like, I've never heard that. Yeah. You know, because kingdom is now is just the, a, the flavor of the month. Right. It's just the, the buzz word. It's just what people are saying. But when you compare the true kingdom to the message that you hear outside, there's no comparison. The kingdom right. is something totally different. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I, I, and I just want to, you know, as we're in the topic, I want to, I want to step on some more toes real quick, uh, <laughs> because uh, I, when I started understanding the relationship that uh, about fatherhood and, and sonship and and how God works within His family and the government of God and all this stuff, and I started learning this, uh, I, I went uh, to you know to my old pastors and, and I was like, hey, you know what? I want to become a son because I'm like. Sonship is where the thing begins. Right. That's where manifestation begins. That's where you start developing and growing. That's where everything that God wants to do in your life begins in sonship. So I'm like, hey, you know what? I don't want to be a son. I don't want to be a slave. I don't want to be none of these people, you know, that are here. I want to be a son. So my thing is like, hey, how can I, be, how can I do it to become a, a, a son, right? And you know what? They they gave me a book, and I started reading the books, and I, and I started reading all this stuff, and. And, and what they were looking for were armor bearers. Yeah. Uh, an armor bearer is a son with no benefits. Right. A son with no blessing. <laughs> a son with no blessing. You get to serve me, you get to die for me, but you get nothing from me. Right. And I'm like, no, that's abuse. That yes. that, that that is Manipulation such contrary everything. to how the kingdom works. Because an, an armor bearer, like I said, they say son with no benefits. Right. It, you get to carry my Bible. You get to carry my laptop. You get to carry all the stuff around. You get to drive me around. You get to do all those things, but right. you get no benefits. You don't sit at my table. You right. get no benefits. Uh, when a door opens, you're the last one to enter because you're there just to serve me and to die. Yes. And I'm like, no, mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not looking to be an armor bearer. I'm looking to be a son. Yeah. Because sonship is what's going to open the doors to the kingdom and all these things for me. And I think that... that the, the religious system, the closest thing that has ever gotten to the sun is an armor bearer. Yeah. And I'm like, no, an armor bearer uh, is, like I said, is a son with no uh, yeah. benefits. It's a terror. It's an imitation. It's, it's an imitation. Servant. It's a yeah. servant. You know, and they use the relationship yeah. between uh, 
uh, Saul uh, and his armor bearer or his slave or, or the guy who carried his armor. And when right. Saul died, his armor bearer also died. I'm like, no. You know, I, fathers want their sons to live, not right. to die. Yeah. You know? Right. right. And, then, <laughs> and then even like try, trying to understand like the function of a father, it's like when you enter that father-son relationship, since the son is so new and just starting, it takes a while, but in actuality, the father is the one that serves the son for the beginning phase of it, yeah. because the father is, is 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 the one that's cultivating. He, he he he's pruning, he's cutting, he's teaching, he's investing so much time into the son, hoping that eventually the son will be able to serve him back. Right. So so it's like like that's what I can say to yeah. that is like in our relationship, like people might see us like like we're cool now and like we have a great relationship mm -hmm. so people i think see us and they think hey well let me be cool with pastor mm -hmm. but what they don't understand is that the first me and you are not cool right we're, we're not cool like we're not <laughs> friends like <laughs> like we have boundaries within yeah. us that we just can't cross but what people don't understand is that the first year of our relationship like we didn't have like conversations about anything else besides the kingdom like all, all we talked about for hours and hours was about the kingdom because that was what revealed the heart of the son and in our relationship that's what led to sonship it was the message of the kingdom it was it was the heart that you had it resonated with the heart that i had we didn't we didn't hang around to chill right yeah we didn't chill and honestly like we we just didn't chill no i was just gonna say and that's what we say that sonship is a private thing because you may see, and that's true, you may see, oh, they're cool, you know, they, they hang out, they go eat together, they're yeah. cool. So maybe my way into sonship is by being cool with him, right. by joking with him. Right. Because, like, if you know him, he's a funny person. He's, you know, yeah. <laughs> well, our humor is similar, so yeah, to so, me, so it's, we think it's funny. funny. <laughs> yeah. but, 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 you know, so you might think, like, oh, so that's the way to become a son, just right. like being cool. But no, there has to be a level of respect and when, yeah. like, to know when to switch to like, okay, we're serious. And as a matter of fact, we're more cool in private than, I mean, in public than we're in private. Like yeah. in private, it's more of a, see, like we have serious re, uh, conversations and, yes. and all these things and correction yeah. comes when it's in private. But it's like, people just want, again, the benefit of like, okay, you know, they're cool. It seems like they're cool, so um, maybe that's how yeah, it should be. Yeah, like, I want to be cool. Yeah, I want to be cool, cool with the pastor, too. But <laughs> now it's like, there's so much more that goes into it. Yeah. It's like, like a lot of people don't understand our, our midnight conversations. Right. Or the, our 3 a.m. conversation. But people are sleeping, we're working. Right. And we're working on our relationship because we're talking about the kingdom. We're talking about what's your problem? What are you, why are you still struggling with this? Right. What's, what's the situation? What are you going to do about it? How can we fix it? Right. This is what we're talking about at 12 o'clock, at 3 a.m. in the morning. Yeah. Well, people are sleeping and then they want to come here and be cool. Right. And then, so. Okay. No, I was just going to say, and by the way, you know, we're there till 3, 4 a.m. And we have to wake up at 5 to yeah. go to work that's the next day. And that's, exactly. the, that's the price to pay. It's like. And sometimes it's like three days in a row. Yeah, like we're, we're, I'm going to sleep and just sleep yeah. two hours. Right, you know, for three days in a row, and it's just like I'm dead, man. Like I'm yeah. dead in the day. But it's that price to pay, right? You know. Yeah, and, and that's what I was saying. Like the 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 learning curve or the curve of your relationship is based on what you you see. Because like with us, or or I'll say you like you like we see day and night. Like how he's saying it was hours and hours on end of not chilling, not talking about sports or anything. No, it was talking about the Bible, and it wasn't even. And this is key for anybody that wants to enter a such a relationship. The father doesn't start the conversations. The father doesn't start anything. It's the son or the mentee that seeks it out. So I remember like I would text you day and night. Like I had no no filter about like when I would text you or when I would call you um, because I had questions. So all the conversations we had were based off of questions that thank God you had answers to. Because if you didn't have answers to, then we would be like, okay, so what's going on? Oh, just tell you go pray. <laughs> right. No, but again, it was based See, off. Deep of, into your heart. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but no, it was it was based off of like questions they, that we had about life, about the, the, the about the Bible and the kingdom. Right. That that's what led again to the central relationship because it was through the kingdom that we grew intimate and that we and that I got to know you not just as a pastor or my teacher, but as like okay, no, this is my father. That we have the same heart, we have the same vision. And I wish we had time, time to talk about it, but it's like part of knowing the heart is actually knowing the desires of the Father. 
Because if people from, from the crowd are helpers or repentees, if they look at you in Vivero, like they can just say like, oh, these guys wanted to build a church because they wanted to be seen. Uh, they didn't like their, their old church or whatever it is that they can think. But it's like as sons, we know that you didn't even want to build a church. Like you didn't want to be a pastor. You didn't want to be seen in a public display. Like you were already functioning at a, at a private level of being a pastor. You were mentoring people already, but it was in your desire to expand it. And it wasn't to expand yourself. Your desire was to expand the kingdom of God because you guys knew that everybody needed a the kingdom. But the only way that the kingdom was going to be expanded was through, was through the authorized vessel, which is the church. So the whole point that you guys started the church was to help expand the kingdom, was to help other people grow. So that's where like you get to know the heart of the father. So we know that it's in your heart to help others. You don't want to take any glory for, for all yourself. You genuinely want to help people. Another another thing that I want to say here, and, 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 and just to, like I said, stir, stir up the pot a little bit, is how long does it take me to text you back? Now or, or before? Anytime. I mean, it depends. I mean, but it's usually quick. I never leave you hanging. Yeah, no, never. And and if you do, it's because you had an emergency or you were in some like situation where you just really couldn't reply. It's actually um, the other day I told you we were supposed to meet with someone, and then I texted you, and I think it took him like thirty minutes to reply, and I was like, the heck, like, yeah. why did it take too long? <laughs> so yeah. long, you know, because we're used to like he always gets back to us right away. Right. Well, what I'll also say is like as you go into the sonship relationship and you grow more as a son and you mature more as a son, um, you as a son realize that okay, now you're not there to put more weight on your pastor. Mm -hmm. You've grown to, to to the level where you don't need your father twenty four seven. Right. So so now it's like yeah, the the first year and a half of our relationship. Yeah, I, I like I didn't give you any breaks. It was like I called you out whatever time I needed help. You would call me back. You would text me back. Um, and that's part of like the other day that I honored um, Ed a lot is because people don't understand that that's the sacrifice that she's done. Like first and foremost, you're her husband. Yeah. Like your guys' relationship is like ideal. Like you guys love to be with each other 24/7. You never get tired of each other. But the fact that like she's had to share you with so many people and we take a lot of your time away like we really do but but it's like again like you've never told us to leave it's been 3 a.m uh maybe Vero has gone to sleep because she's tired but we see you're tired but you're still there like giving and giving and giving until like we realize like oh shoot like okay it's like work tomorrow. yeah yeah like like we gotta go yeah. but again it's like that's part of like what being a son is like you actually get to know the heart of the father and you get access to all these things now. the reason why i mentioned that is because uh, there is very detrimental uh to sons or to mentees sometimes when they're, they they want to get a hold of a person uh, and they can't get a hold of them right and and, and they need help on the spot and and this person texts them three days later yeah four days later and by that time you're, you're probably dead already right so you know for for me i i found it that that because i love my wife i want to get back to her quick yeah so when i get a text message i answer quick so right. i can get back to her and i'm not distracted it's just the way that i'm built my from my job all the way to now it's like i gotta get whatever's in front of me out of the way so that i can get back to what i love to do so i so i can be at peace mm. but but one of the most important things about uh being a father is about being available yes and you can't say that you're a father if you're not available right if you if you keep on ignoring them yeah if you keep if you don't answer the calls if you don't answer the text if you if you don't answer the email if you're if you're just simply too busy because i'm busy too right so I, I, I'm more busy than a lot of people think that I am. Right. But I get a text message and I want to make sure that I acknowledge you because I I care about your spiritual well-being enough uh, so that you can understand that, that I'm not ignoring you. Yeah. Right. And, and it doesn't cause any conflict for you. Yeah, because just like the son has responsibilities and has things that the son has they to do, mm -hmm. the same thing goes for the father. So so that's why like when we entered our father son of a relationship, just as much as I had to, to think about if I was willing to, to submit, if I was willing to obey and receive instruction and, yeah. and, and correction, it was also part on you. Like you had to acknowledge that 
okay, hey, now that I'm going to have a son, is like, do am I ready to be available 24-7? Right. Am I ready to actually instruct? Um, and something that we've been talking about that most people we don't know, but it's like, you guys as models, like, you can't take a break. You can't mess up. It's like, as a pastor, yes, I guess it sounds bad, but if you fail, it's like, if you have no sons and it's like, you just fail as a pastor. But if you fail as a father and you shame your sons, the, your sons that look to you as the model, your sons that look to you for everything, if you fail as a father, it's like you've destroyed your, your, um, um, your sons. Mm -hmm. So it was like, just as much as the son ha had to acknowledge what being a son is, yeah. the father also has to realize, hey, having a son isn't just... Okay, cool. I have somebody to serve me. Um, I have some somebody that's gonna do all these things for me. Yeah, I, I just wanted to add, like, like in the physical, when you're a father and you have sons, if you fail, you bring your entire family with you. Yes. Yeah. So, a father cannot fail. Right. Because if he does, the entire family suffers. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it has to be a decision that has to be made that I'm gonna become a model. Right. A pastor doesn't have to worry about that. Right, no. Because a pastor doesn't have a relationship with all the people. He's just there giving them the word, let them let them eat and let them leave or whatever. But as a father, you don't you don't have that luxury. Right. You know, I, I need to be make a decision to become a model, not for me, but for the people that, that, that are under me. Right. Because if I fail I bring all of them down. Right. So and then, so a father is is a totally different thing. Right, and then as we were ta talking about, like, in the levels of relationship, like, at a mentee, you, you can only get transferred to college. But when I was saying that as a son, a father transfers his life, it's that. It's like the father has modeled his standards, his character, his way of being, his way of acting, his way of thinking, his way of speaking. So that's what gets transferred to the son now. But it's like if you fail, then you're transferring that to your son now. It's like as a pastor, you don't transfer failure. It's just like, hey, I failed, and it's like, I'm sorry to you guys, but yeah. but that's where it stops. But as a father, it's like, no, you're transferring that as well to your sons now. So like you said, as a father, you can't fail because that's what you're going to transfer. Yeah, and um, just last thing to add. Um, because a father is supposed to redirect you back to your, your original father, which is God, uh, at some point, and it's kind of going back to what you said about... Um, um, what is it? Knowing, understanding that uh, we're supposed to take off weight off his shoulders right. rather than put more is that we understand that at, because it's supposed to redirect us back to God. At some point, there has to be a, a, a point where we uh, are able to receive from by seeking the Bible, by reading from the yeah. Bible. It's like we don't depend on Him entirely, but there has to be a level of in, in, in dependency, you yes. know, in us because there's going to be more sons coming. And he needs right. to be available for them, just like he was for us at the beginning. So right. uh, that's where that comes in, and and, and I think it's, um, I think it applies to my life a lot because there's many times that I, I like, I'm like, typing a text, and then I'm like, you know what? Like I could probably find the answer yeah. in the Bible if I just like look <laughs> rather than the uh, the easy way and just going and uh, and asking yeah. him. So uh, taking off the the weight off his shoulders i would say you know right and then even just like you said like as a son like his whole point for us is to be independent like he doesn't want to make us dependent to him because then there's no growth the minute that he leaves then it's like okay he's like there's nobody independent enough to carry it so the cool thing about our father is that even when we've asked him questions like yes he's told us the answer but we've looked for it together so like you said like we've grown to the point where we can be independent so now it's like people may not know this but in their heart it's like mondays and tuesdays are their days so it's like i don't even try to like text them because i know that those are days that they've dedicated for themselves once wednesday to sunday come okay then it's like okay now we're back like okay let's talk but as a son like now that i've received so much i give them their time now so other people can take a time away because obviously they haven't gotten there yet but like as a son it's like okay now i know that mondays and tuesdays are your specific days with your wife i'm not going to text you like you said with questions that i have if i do have questions i'm going to seek it myself and with the answer i come up with when we see each other again then i'll relay it to you 
Yeah, and as, and as a father, uh, or as a son even, the father seeks to make sure that his vision continues even after he's gone. Yes. That's when you said that the Saul yeah. with the armor bearer, um, and they tied together. It's like, well, it wasn't a son because the, son, the father's desire is for the son to continue the work. Continue. Right. So, yeah, and, then, and it, it goes back to what we were talking the other day. It's like the father wants to create more fathers because there's going to be more sons coming anyway. Yeah. So... Yeah, and, and no, and that is the reason why I have to be a good model of a father. Why? Right. Because you guys are going to be fathers. Yeah. And you guys have to have a reference point. Yes. Jesus says, I only say what I hear my father say, and I work because my father works. Yes. So you're always going to do what you see your father do. Yes. So if you see me screwing up, then it's going to give you an opportunity to screw up. So right. I won't screw up so that you don't have an excuse. Right. So that you can stay firm and stable and be able to become the model that you're supposed to become. That is right. the price that I have to pay as, yeah. as a father as well because I need to be able to be firm and stable and, and not and not do what other people are doing because of you guys. Right. And then, like, I'm just thinking about being a model. It's like that's where as a son, and, and again, like, I pray that people can understand this concept of what the heart of the father is because that's where that's where you really see it. Because there's been instances where me as a third party, I observe something and you reacted a certain way. And then in the private, I'm like, hey, why did you react this way? Why did you say stuff th this way? Like, why didn't you just do this? And then that's when I hear your heart and you hear like, no, like I need to, even, even if like they don't understand it, like I need to serve them still. Like I'm still serving them. So like that's what I mean by, by like standards and character get transferred as a father to son because you get to experience those times because as sons like you said we're growing and we're we're supposed to become fathers so you being the model okay now when I get to be a father I know that I have to even at sometimes like lower myself to serve somebody else that I need to let go of what I am, ignore my pride or let go of my ego to serve somebody else because that's what my father did. And there's been so, so many times where me as a son, I've seen that, where it's like, I know that I would have reacted different. And then that's why I question you. And I'm like, hey, like, why did you say this instead of this? Or hey, you were right. Like, why did you let them think that they were right when you were right? And then that's when, again, I get to hear your heart. And it's like, no, like, I need to build them up. Like, even if they were wrong, like, I still need to push them up and cheer them on and, and just encourage them to keep me going. So that's when me as a son, I know, okay, as a father, I need to encourage. I need to push. I, I need to just empower people because that's what a father does. Yeah, it's crazy, man. We can go on here for another two hours. Yeah. And we already gone over 11 minutes. Oh, but, um, you know, we just want to um, say we're going to continue these topics on sonship and we're going to get into fatherhood eventually as well because it needs to be addressed especially if we want to be effective in the kingdom the kingdom does not work outside that those relationships yeah uh, the kingdom gets transferred from father to son from father to son from father to son so we need to become fathers and have sons to transfer something to yeah so you know i i received it from my father uh I, you're going to receive it from me you're going to give it to my grandchildren right. to your sons and it's going to keep on going from from generation to generation family to family it doesn't ever change right. because it's it's a spiritual thing it's not it's not a a, a uh, materialistic or, or or just a carnal thing it's, it's right. something in the so, spirit that we're transferring yeah so uh so we need to be able to have people understand how the kingdom works so that they can fulfill the full potential as well so uh we're going to continue this sunday with sonship i believe i don't know uh, we're, we're still going to talk about it because i know we're, we're looking at each other but uh we're going to see who's going to talk about sonship this sunday uh and add more to it uh, and go from there so you know just say bye to the to the people for now and we'll continue yeah well yeah um, may god bless you guys um i pray that this bless you guys um and just realize that the call to sonship is for any age for anybody um the older you are and if you have a family the more you need sonship yeah. because you're already in the place of a father and yeah. you need to become a son so that you can be a better father quicker um but yeah if if this blessed you guys just reach out to us if you guys have any questions uh reach out to us or our pastor um and yeah i just pray bless you guys yeah, I mean, the last thing I can say is that uh, we're all going to be presented people in our lives, either biological sons or people that will come and seek something that we have. So if we don't understand that we need to prepare ourselves now and become and be good sons now, we're not going to be able to be good fathers to them. 
and let's just put the spiritual aside if you want biologically you're gonna have most likely you're gonna have kids at some point so uh, just make sure that you prepare yourself to instruct your kids in the right path right so that's what we'll continue um, Sunday and probably the next uh, week or so and then and then we'll go from there. We'll Thank see where the Spirit connecting. takes us with that. Uh, on Friday, we are going to go back to Bible study. Uh, uh, we're not going to stream it, but we invite everybody that is watching us and everybody that's going to listen to this. If you don't have a home church or, you, or your church doesn't have service uh, on Friday, come and join us and read the Bible with us. We're going through, our, through the Bible series every Friday. Uh, and it gets very good because we touch the Bible raw and we interpret the Bible raw and the conversations get very raw. So it's very interesting to be here. So just one part of what God is doing. Uh, and then Sundays we go back to our regular uh, messages preaching. Uh, and like I said, we're going to keep on touching on sonship. Uh, also, if you want to partner with us and if you want to sow into this ministry, you guys can do it through Zell at Honor Seed at House633.com. Uh, believe me that anything that you sow into the kingdom will come back to you a hundred times more. Like I said, but don't do it uh, necessarily for, for those blessings. Do it because it'll, it'll, it's, it's kind of like you catapult, uh, catapulting yourself into where God wants to take you. Yeah. The more you're invested into the kingdom, the more you're going to pay attention to it. So I always recommend people to give from a million and up. Because the more money you give, the more invested you'll be. Yeah. So the less you give, the less invested you'll, right. you'll, you'll give. So and it's not about money. It's about your soul. It's yeah. about your life. It's about your potential. And it's about what God wants to do with you. So until next time, to the king. To the king.